Absolutely, 100%. What do you think? But let's just go with it. Go if he comes in, he comes in. Yep. <laughs> he may have Good. vacation Bible school this week. All he right, does. I'm going to go ahead and call our meeting to order. First item up on our agenda is <laughs> to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve our consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on with Mr. Ray, our April financial report. Everybody in their uh, board package should have the um, financial statements for general purpose school fund. Um, just real brief, uh, BEP is, is considered state funds. That's allocated based on ADM. That's coming in as allocated. Taxes are our local money. The lion's share is property tax and sales tax. Um, we've adjusted the budget in prior months to reflect kind of the actual flow. Um, so that's coming in as we expect. Um, on the expense side, um, there's some expenditures that um, we've budgeted for that are, are not going to happen this year. The access control system, I think, is going to be something that maybe starts in July. So that, that money will actually go into next year's. Um, the flooring at South Clinton will complete the South Clinton expansion. Once they get that finished, I expect that to be done in June. So that expense will hit this year. Um, and is in the budget uh, already and the expense for the uh, sanitary sewer line that uh, Joey has a sample of um, I expect the majority of the completion to be done this year so we'll, we'll recognize some of that expense this year and probably some of that expense next year. What do you call that again? Terrazzo. Federal projects is, uh, remember, those are all reimbursement grants. We spend the money, we get reimbursed. We're at uh, 45 days of what I call <coughs> aged accounts receivable. Um, that's about where we usually lie. Um, I always shoot to try to get it in the 30 days, but no more than 60. So um, we're doing good there. Uh, cafeteria fund, right now we have a surplus of around $100,000. Um, I expect to end the year. Uh, so we still have May, and we still have uh, June, which is summer school at North, to book. Um, but I expect to end between ninety and hundred thousand dollars surplus in the in the cafeteria fund. Um, uh, any questions on the financial statements? We re I, I think I'm speaking for everyone, but you do an awesome job. Oh, we thank you. We really appreciate you for. Mm -hmm. For a guy with no fashion sense, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, she said no sense. Did she no say fashion sense? No sense. fashion sense. <laughs> fashion sense. Yeah. Right. Just stick to your numbers. Clear, stick to your clear numbers. That up. Um, in the financial statement, <laughs> if there's no questions, uh, I've added a page um, for the uh, cash position, um, a memo for myself. It's the last page in the financial statement section. Every month, I'm going to report. Our cash position. Um, what we've, what I've done. Kelly and I have, have opened up a CD with Knoxville Teachers Federal Credit Union for two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, ORNL Federal Credit Union for two hundred fifty thousand. And we have the LGIP. That's Local Government Investment Pool. Uh, we have five hundred thousand in there. Uh, that at, that rate fluctuates, but. For the month of May, it was 4.91 percent. The CD at ORNL, I think, was 5.1 percent, and the Knoxville Credit Union was 4.7 or 8 percent. The reason for the difference is Knoxville Teachers Federal Credit Union. If we want our money, they only charge two months of interest. That's a little bit of a lower rate. If we want to get our money from ORNL, it's six months of interest. So. They can pay a higher rate because the penalty to get the money out early withdrawal is, is more. We don't anticipate doing that because as we're getting ready to see, we have uh, $2.8 million in cash 
um, as of yesterday, sitting at Regions, um, and this is pulled directly from the bank state bank. Um, we have about $20,000 that sits at Knoxville Teachers Federal Credit Union for debit cards, um, and we use that kind of like a credit card. Um, and then cash with the city, still we have $2.5 million with the city. Um, so that gives us total cash of 6.4 million, 6.5 if you want to round it. Um, our insured balance is only $750,000. Um, so um, our fund balance is only $5.3 million plus, plus cafeteria, so let's just say 5.75. Um, we, we have more cash than fund balance. Well, how is that? It's the timing of property tax collections. They hit real heavy in January, February, March, and then they start to trail off. So right now, we're cash greater than fund balance. That'll even out and then reverse, and then it'll happen again. Um, so that's normal for where we are at in the year. Um, any questions about what we're doing? I think I have, uh, you've given me authorization to do one more CD or one more bank account for 250000 <coughs> I'm going to do that as soon as we have the chance to sit down with somebody. That, that's on my agenda. And that's all I have for the cash position. Okay. Any questions or comments for Mr. Ray? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve our financial report for the month of April as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Hey, Kay Yes. Lori Wilson? Yes. Kim Bible? Yes. Laurel Price? Yes. Joe Stamps? Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to budget amendment number six. Should have a memo that precedes the, the detail of the budget amendment. I'll just go over the memo. Uh, in general purpose school fund, the bulleted items uh, are additional, kind of the wrapping up the year, getting salaries and benefits adjusted. Um, sometimes we might expect to hire a teacher with on step 20 and we hire a teacher on step five or reverse. So sometimes we don't know how it's going to play out until the year starts and then pregnancies and interim placements happen. So uh, there are some adjustments. Medical insurance, I noticed a trend that I was constantly having to increase uh, our cost of medical insurance. It just seemed like uh, every functional area I went to in the budget, I was like, increase medical, increase medical. Part of that's what we do, what I budget is, uh, doesn't include an increase because I don't know what the increase is. We pay for all practical purposes. We absorb seven months of an increase for the teachers, the way we our, our policy is when a teacher agrees to work for us, the health insurance rate is what it is, and we're not going to increase it. Well, the increase is hit January. Well, it wouldn't be fair to say you agreed to work for us, and now we're going to charge you more for health insurance. So we absorb that. That's where the most of that is coming from, and we're picking up spouses. Um, but um, nothing unexpected there. Um, the increase in custodial supplies is concerning to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's inflation. Plastic bags have doubled. Mm -hmm. um, I want to reuse them. You all laugh, but hey. Um, <laughs> uh, Keep our schools clean. <laughs> kind of kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, increase in maintenance repair services. I, I budgeted some money to try to figure out what where we would stand on the wastewater line. I think majority of that will be completed, as I said earlier, before June 30th. <laughs> um, and then we decrease some capital expenditures, the access control system that will actually get pushed in next year. Um, our fund balance, I kind of scheduled out where our fund balance, uh, you know, sometimes we'll do a budget amendment and we can increase <coughs> expenditures and increase revenue to fund that. And sometimes we go to fund balance. So I've, I've shown you um, where we are, we are for the year right now. We are going to be going into fund balance three hundred and ninety thousand. That is about um, what we've paid this year 
for South Flint. Because remember, that crossed years. Um, so that's uh, the reason I say that is it's not unexpected. Nothing in this budget amendment is, is unexpected to me. Um, federal projects, uh, various reclassifications, but there's no additional grant money that's come in. Uh, cafeteria <coughs> fund, uh, we got a supply chain assistant grant um, that they just gave us and we gladly accepted. And it was about $33,000. Uh, did you have to apply for that one, or did they just... We just had to say yes. Okay. Um, then we said yes. Yes. And we said yes. Um, <clears throat> and we didn't really experience <coughs> any supply chain issues with Airmark. Sure you did. Uh, well, but we'll take the money. <laughs> um, they got us on some on, on, on some other stuff mm -hmm. that systems that weren't so uh, good about starting seamless summer like we are. We kind of got penalized for that. We, we actually produce more meals during COVID, seamless mm -hmm. summer, and the way they allocate commodities, they skipped that year. They said, we're not gonna use one. It would have helped us if they had used the COVID year for us, but they didn't. So I look at this as payback. <laughs> um, any questions on the budget amendment? All right. Any questions for Mr. Ray? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve budget amendment number six. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none, Kim, could we have a roll call vote, please? Kay Kay Meredith? Yes. Lauren Gillespie? Yes. Kim Bonneville? Yes. Merle Cross? Yes. Joey Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you. Moving on to new business. Uh, every year we have to extend our financial obligations so that Kelly can pay for bills that were uh, accumulated in the current school year that carry over to the next fiscal year. So uh, that's generally uh, uh, happens every time. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to extend our financial obligations. So moved. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our school board meeting schedule. I don't think there's any surprises in there. So I'll entertain a motion to approve our meeting schedule as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our 23 24 annual agenda. I don't think there's any surprises or anything there. Does anybody have any questions regarding our agenda? In July, is that two nights? Yes, okay. so Thursday night and Friday night. Okay. Yes. And we were able, I know I sent you all an email that we were on the waiting list. We got in. But we okay. did, we did, we get, did in. get in, so okay. everybody yeah. is set to go That's for the that. 21st and 22nd, I believe. Uh, okay. The 21st and 22nd, yeah, yes. Yeah, 21st and 22nd. So the meeting doesn't actually, we leave on a Thursday evening and go up there because the meeting starts at 8 o'clock on Friday. So it's all day Friday. Friday mm -hmm. So it's all day, all day Friday and just in the morning for Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see, we were to our annual agenda. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve our annual agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? A motion carries. Moving on. Every year we approve the Anderson County Health Department uh, Dental Program and the Lions Club for revision to check our students there. I think both of those are great policies. Uh, every year I have to say that I am a dentist uh, and work at the health department part-time. Uh, but, however, it is a wonderful program for the children that will kind of be falling through the cracks that will not receive any dental care at all. Uh, so I will be voting yes, even though I am employed by Anderson County uh, Health Department, I will be voting yes because it is a great program for the benefit of our children. Any questions or comments <laughs> regarding approval of the Anderson County Health Department or Lions Club? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? 
Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on with our contract with Stellar Therapy Services. So this, we are requesting approval for, um, for us to enter a contract with Stellar Therapy Services, and they are a third-party vendor where we can begin to collect money for our 10 care kids for receiving OT, PT services, speech services, and then also we want to pilot a program at North first and try to recoup some of our nursing services. So Suzanne has worked hard. This has been several years in the making, actually. It has not been an easy um, venture to try to figure out the ins and outs, but um, there is quite a bit of criteria and asking for that reimbursement. So we want to contract with Stellar. They will handle all of our reimbursements for us. And um, then obviously they will get a portion of that reimbursement, but the, ma the majority of it, what is the, what is the 70-30? Mm -hmm. So this is just a way, as you know, um, we are now employing our own OTA and PTA um, that are with Clinton City Schools. And so this is gonna be a way since we are absorbing those salaries, we, of course we are basically paying their salaries through Sidekick, through um, you know, a private agency, but this will be a way for us to recoup some of our funds for some of the services that we're providing students. Well, I do think, I, I think I saw in the, in the contract it was uh, based on collections yes. uh, and not per, per child. So that way we're not out any money Correct. until we technically get paid. It costs us nothing. It, it, it costs us nothing. nothing. Yeah. So I thought that was a great mm -hmm. addition in the contract. So Suzanne will be our person who oversees that since she is over special education and all of our special therapies. Okay. Right. So that included speech? It does. It, we are rolling that in. The speech and language teachers have to make sure that they've got not only their educational license, but their practitioner's license as well. And um, there's some things that they have to do on their end. Um, one has already gotten everything that she needs, so we'll probably go ahead and start with her. Um, our goal is to have the other two on by December, and we think we're on track to have the other two. So, so North, we will be able to go ahead. Drew's mm -hmm. is ready to rock and roll with it. So. Is that just um, because they're working with the school or this? For them to be able to bill to 10 care, they have to okay. have their credentials. Um, that help. So okay. That's where we are. All right. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract with Stellar Th Therapy Services. So <laughs> I'll say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, I, did I have a motion? So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our breakfast and lunch pricing. I'll let Scott talk a little bit about how we came upon this decision, but as you know, we have to show that we're doing the annual increases every year. Um, Scott has worked hard to kind of come up with what would be fair. Um, we did decide not to go up on breakfast prices this year as we just want to continue to encourage kids to come and eat um, a healthy breakfast, even though it was in the formula that we did need to increase um, that. We might have to absorb a little bit of that through our fund balance, but um, we are um, suggesting an increase in the lunch. And so, Scott, do you have anything else that you want to add to that? Um, yes. Sorry. <laughs> What Kelly was referring to, like the mandatory increase in lunch pricing, is called the paid lunch equity. And what the federal government, the USD, USDA, is trying to ensure that we don't subsidize kids, paid kids, kids that can afford to buy a meal. We don't subsidize their meal with federal dollars. So we're required to charge a certain amount that is equitable with what we get from the USDA unless we have a fund balance, which we do, and we can be exempt from the paid lunch equity tool. So we are exempt, but that generally is a 10 cent increase or more. Um, but, it, you know, everybody sees the news about inflation. Airmark, um, and uh, I think we have a memo in here about the Airmark contract that's gone up 8.2%. Um, so I think we have a responsibility to, now that doesn't affect 
students in need. The, it doesn't launch, yeah. affect free launch. It doesn't affect reduced price launch. That price uh, remains the same. Uh, 30 cents for breakfast, 40 cents for lunch is the reduced price. Free is free. Uh, so it impacts students that have the economic ability to pay. Um, we also need to continue to build the fund balance up because you know, each kitchen is, you know, Clinton Elementary's kitchen has a million dollars worth of equipment in it. And it's aged. So and we need to get prepared to replace some of that. Um, so that's why I, I, can, I can suggest that we increase the prices. It's, it's your decision, obviously, but in good faith, I think that it's the right thing to do. Um, we're not trying to hoard money or make a lot of money. You know, we're just trying to be responsible um, for the long term. Um, and. Um, Kind of the give was keeping breakfast prices the, mm -hmm. the same, uh, encouraging that participation, which is what we want. Um, and where can you get a lunch for three dollars and ten cents? I, I agree. Clinton Elementary School. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it may not have been like like when we were in school, you know, big baked potatoes, and, uh, but there's a lot of requirements now. Um, where did you go to school? Well, I never got a baked potato. Oh, well. Square pizza, like oh, five yeah. days a week. Well, <laughs> dogs. Was that when you went to your elementary school? In my elementary, <laughs> I was a, I, 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 um, in any event, yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't think that's unreasonable. We, any time that we've increased, and you guys would hear from your constituents. Um, I've never heard complaints. complaints. I've had some staff um, complain about. The lunch, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the kids. So. Sorry, I'll, I'll be quiet now, Kelly. <laughs> what was the staff last year? It was still five dollars. So well, was. yeah, for uh, special meals, um, and at breakfast was three seventy-five. Lunch is five dollars. That hasn't changed. We haven't touched staff in several years. Mm -hmm. Any further questions or comments for Mr. Ray? All right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve our breakfast and lunch pricing as presented. So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our Amtrak contract amendment number one. <laughs> Oh, air mark. <laughs> air mark. Sorry about that. <laughs> so before he gets into the airmark contract, just to let you know that, you know, Oak Ridge had used airmark for 26 years, and so them getting Clinton City on board, it was a great partnership because they could share the same management for both for both school systems. We are required every five years to RFP, <clears throat> and. After 26 years, Airmark did not win the RFP for Oak Ridge City Schools. And so it went with a competitor that is called SFE. And so Airmark has been committed. Um, we are a smaller school system, but Airmark has been very vocal about being committed to remaining in Clinton City Schools. Um, while they have done some staffing changes, and Jen Taylor, who we've worked with ever since we began our work with Airmark, she has received a promotion in Texas, mm. so she will be relocating. And now we have our very own chef. Chef Eric is going to be the official chef for Airmark, and then he will also oversee the three schools. And so they will move their headquarters from Oak Ridge City to Clinton Elementary School up where the tech office is, where their kind of temporary office was. So we will have a chef on site. That, that will be positive um, for us, but um, that, that's just a different kind of setup with management that they have. And then Scott, I'll let you talk about the specifics of our contract amendment. Um, so I was a little nervous when things were happening with Oak Ridge and, and Airmark. Um, and I got on the phone fairly quickly and said, where's our renewal? I, I want that. Um, and, and so this is the, there's a memo in there that kind of outlines the renewal. 2022-23 uh, fiscal year, school year, was what's called our base contract year. We RFP the agreement. It's a five-year agreement. 
Um, but it's really a one-year agreement with four renewals. Um, and each year, if they don't want to renew, we have to RFP it again. So it's really not a five-year agreement. It's, it's a five-year agreement to agree. <laughs> Um, so the first renewal is uh, what we have before us for, for next school year. That's amendment number one. And that's where um, the CPI increase, it's uh, the consumer price index for food away from home. Uh, I can't remember if it's rural or urban, but it's um, December of 22 to, um, sorry, December of 21 to December of 22, the increase. That increase is the increase they're allowed to use. So they're always a year or a year and a half behind. Um, given that, it's probably going to be another 8% next year um, it's because of what we're in now. But um, we, uh, the USDA rates are also going to go up with inflation. Um, and so I, I feel comfortable that we're not going to experience an economic impact necessarily from the air market increase because our USDA increase and our paid lunches have increased to kind of get us more a break even on those. Um, at the, the last paragraph in my memo s says that I recommend we approve this and it still needs state agency approval. Um, long story short, um, Airmark used the wrong consumer price index, <laughs> so I had to send them the correct CPI and took another couple weeks, but they finally approved it today, um, a couple hours ago. So we're, we are good to go for next year and these are the accurate amounts. Um, we have a meal equivalent and what that means is what does it cost us for them to produce a breakfast, a lunch, a snack, a la carte um, is a little confusing. We have a gross margin of 5.5%. That's, we make five and a half percent on every dollar of product that they sell. It's not our product, it's their product, and they give us five and a half percent. That to me kind of pays for our cooler for the ice cream, the freezer for the ice cream, that type of thing. But again, the food is not ours, the food is their marks, the labor is their marks. The only thing that is ours is the facility. Um, so given that, I'd, I'd recommend that you uh, allow me to sign off on that contract and approve it. Okay. We have a recommendation to approve Airmark's amendment number one contract. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Can I just ask some questions? You may. You know, we don't have a lot of constituents come to us with issues about anything. I think the only thing that I've ever heard are people's concern that a kid's balance gets too high and then they don't get anything or they get a piece of toast and I said we don't do that and I, I'm, how do we make sure that happens because like you said it's just our facility right. and we're sort of hands off everything else. There, there's a couple things that, in, that have hit the paper in the last year and actually the some legislators are talking about it and it's just not accurate. Mm -hmm. One, when a student goes through the breakfast line or the lunch line, no one knows if they're free, reduced, or paid. No one knows. Do they not get tickets? Nope. nope. There's no, no ticket. It's all it's code. On, It doesn't even like flash up. Paid, free. It's, it's just a student name and they get charged for the meal. So the point of sale system says, that's where the calculation is made, kind of in the, in the back room on a server. It says, all right, this kid eats for free, so nothing gets charged to their account. Mm -hmm. uh, this kid eats for reduced, so we're going to charge the student 40 cents. Or this kid is paid, and we're going to charge the student $3.10 for a lunch. So the parents put money on the account, uh, free, reduced, or paid, because you know, there's all a car. Um, so that's one of the misconceptions that is out there. And then the second one is kids that have built up a balance. Um, and most of that is kids that are paid. Because um, if you eat for free, you, don't run a balance. you shouldn't a balance. run a balance. Um, the only thing we don't do, 
I'll get back to that. But um, for lunches, we, we don't distinguish whether they still get a lunch. If they owe $300, they, mm -hmm. they get a lunch. And it's the same lunch. It's not an alternative lunch. Mm -hmm. It's That's no part of our agreement with Airmark. Mm -hmm. As we have talked to them, they are very much about wanting to implement our philosophy and our expectations, and we've made that very clear to them that regardless of the account, they get a regular they get a regular lunch. Airmark doesn't care. The only thing that we don't do is if they have an astronomical balance, we don't do a la carte. We don't allow them to purchase extra things, but they do get the, the full, complete meal that every other child would get. Airmark doesn't care. If they serve a meal, we pay for it. Clinton City Schools does. The student doesn't necessarily. They pay us, so we are the ones that carry the balance if they have a high balance. And as Kelly was talking about, I call it the grandpa rule. Uh, if a kid, if the grandpa gives a kid a dollar to buy an ice cream and they have a $50 account balance, we're going to let them use that dollar to buy the ice cream. If a kid goes through the line and says, I want an ice cream, and they have a $50 balance and no method to pay for that particular ice cream because grandpa didn't give them any money that day, then they can't buy the ice cream. And that's the only time that we say, no, you can't add to your account balance via a la carte, but we don't, if you give your son or daughter money to purchase something, we allow that particular cash transaction like to happen. Say, no, that goes towards your collection account. Yeah, yeah. no, no, we weren't gonna, <laughs> and, and you know, because a lot of times grandpa will drop a kid off, and grandma and give the kid some ice cream money, and we wanna. Yeah, and we're very committed to keeping the kid out of it because the, the child has no control yeah. over whether mom so and dad sure. let a balance. So sure. Now, Harper Maxwell is part of our cafeteria, and she, she, does, a she does a wonderful job of calling parents. And a lot of times, just they don't know. They don't know that the balance is, you know, added up. And, you know, we've got a report of everything that's bought on every day, so all of it is, you know, there for us to show to parents. And she'll work with parents if it gets out of control and can, can you pay five dollars a week can you pay six dollars a week you know we have donors that will say help a kid and she was like i'll put in twenty dollars if you can commit to five dollars a week we'll help you get this paid off but she's real good about working with the parents but then in those phone calls what we find out many times is well my situation has changed i've lost a job and then that gives us the opportunity to say oh my goodness now you would qualify for free and reduced lunch let's send home the form and let us help you mm -hmm. get on this to where lunches aren't a burden on you and so she does it in a great just very compassionate genuine genuine way but our our goal is to always keep the kid out of the mix because they don't need the stress of what mom and dad either aren't able to do or aren't choosing to do and she does a good job. I know, I know my wife, Vicki, got an ice cream or something one day and had a balance, and Harper tracked oh, down. Oh, yeah? Oh, she tracks down the <laughs> teachers, too, yes. Yeah. Yes, and sometimes uh, we have a harder time with the teachers paying off their balance. <laughs> not your wife, well, not your wife, but sometimes. <laughs> not out of, you know, just teachers are busy getting their kids there, and then they get to the cafeteria, and they've forgotten their purse. And So but we're not going to let a teacher go hungry either. If you ever have a parent say that mm -hmm. any of that's, the it's items that we talked about. We want to know. I can guarantee you that that didn't happen. And then I've need, always I said that's not going to happen, and I just wanted to make sure I. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. Stayed informed on all that, you know. You did good. You're correct. All right. Thank you. Great question. All right. Any further questions or comments? I believe on the floor we have a motion and a second. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Moving on to our director's evaluation, Molly Scarborough once again was absolutely wonderful uh, in uh, collecting the um, evaluations and everything that went along with that, uh, calling everyone, touching base. Um, she does a wonderful job. She's a great asset to the schools mm -hmm. and, and I just want to thank her for doing all of that. Uh, in the end, another great evaluation for our Director of Schools, Ms. Kelly. Uh, everything that was in the evaluation uh, always uh, consistently meets expectations or exceeds all of our expectations. Uh, there was no marks in usually meets, seldom meets, or never meets expectations. Uh, 
and a lot of great comments as to the wonderful job that you're doing, Kelly, that we uh, greatly appreciate. Uh, comments similar to great spokesperson for Clinton City Schools, excellent leader and partner in advancing schools, um, best director in the business, uh, exceeds all expectations in her role as a director, um, true professional with heart for the schools, students and staff. Uh, and you know, I, th I think everybody, everybody is on the same page uh, and we are greatly, greatly appreciative of the of the work that you do and, and keeping Clinton in your heart and, and everything. Job well done. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. This is always one of the most uncomfortable mm -hmm. things that I do all year long. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. It is truly a joy. I go back to a South Clinton parking lot when Vicki was leaving and Tim Bible <coughs> and I stood under a street light as I looked at Dr. Bible for, and said, I, I don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I'm ready for this. I need Vicki to stay. I need Vicki to stay. And he was very, very encouraging, and you all have, you all have really been the reason that this school system is able to be so successful. Because I would not do this for anybody else, other than than what we have right here. You all are always so willing to support all of us, knowing that sometimes we're going to get it right and sometimes we're going to get it wrong, and that's just part of what we do. But you all are always so willing to let us try new things and and see if it works. But I, there's never been a time that I have not felt supported by every single person sitting here. And that is so unusual when I go to director meetings and hear some of the stories that my friends are, are having to struggle with. We truly do have something, something special here. And Clinton does have my heart. Clinton City Schools absolutely, absolutely has my heart. There will come a time where you'll be ready for me to leave. And when that happens, you have to promise to let me know. But <laughs> until that time, I will gladly stay and fight for our sweet kids. I appreciate all the kind words. Well, thank you for a job well done. All right, we do need to approve this evaluation officially, so I'll entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. So moved. So moved. <laughs> second by everybody. Everyone. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Moving on. State law says that uh, we have to have a director on a, a maximum of a four-year contract is the maximum we can give. It can be anything less than that, but it, must, it cannot exceed a four-year contract. As we end June, we will be taking one year off of your uh, contract, and you will be currently on a three-year contract. Uh, but it's my intent to keep you here as long as we can. So. I would love to entertain a motion to approve Kelly for a one-year extension of her contract to the state maximum level. So moved. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. 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 Motion and a second. <laughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, we'll go to reports and information. Any right. reports? Yeah. Okay. okay. First of all, thank you. Thank you very much. That that means that means the world um, that you all believe in me and believe in our people. I will always say that my daddy taught me that you surround yourself with people smarter than you, and that is exactly what I have done with the people sitting with the people sitting out there. So they, while I may be the face of it, they are the ones. <laughs> Did, that one with no sense over there. They don't have, I, you're smarter than me. You don't have as much common sense as me, but you are smarter than me. <laughs> oh, all right. Here's, I'll second that. <laughs> okay, a couple of fun updates for Clinton City Schools. First of all, Danny Gowen, stand up. So, Danny, it's, this is his last couple of weeks with us so this is his last official school board meeting wow. i started telling him he didn't have to come tonight and then i thought no i want the school board to lay eyes on you one more time to see if we can do any um fun jokes about color printers or copies or or anything fun that we might want to talk about but danny has just been danny how many years have you been in clinton city schools 14. 14. so he was here when i came here and it has just been a joy getting to know him on both a professional and a personal level. He is a very, very dear friend of mine. He has personally walked me through lots of lots of life struggles, and he just is a calming force um, to our to our group. And we have just been blessed to have him. Um, I do have a funny story to tell. We give away a retirement gift at the end of the year, 
and it's always been a birdhouse for years, and uh, the sweet man that has made birdhouses for us for years is no longer making them. <clears throat> so we had stockpiled some, and but we didn't have enough for everybody that retired this year. So we moved to a formal rocking chair for all of the teachers who retired, but because Kim Leach and him are leaving at the end of June, I gave them their choice if they wanted a birdhouse or a rocking chair. And so Kim thought long and hard. So I asked Danny this question and he pauses for a second. And I was like, well, Danny, really, I know this probably present is more for Lisa, your wife, than it is for you. If you need to consult with her about which one you prefer, you can get back to me. You don't have to answer me right now. And in typical male fashion, he said, I'll take the birdhouse. I can get it home easier. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so Danny got the birdhouse. Um, he was able to choose his to choose his color. But Danny, I so appreciate. And I just want publicly to know how much Clinton City Schools appreciates all that you have done. You will always be known as the trailblazer for making us a one-to-one -one district, for teaching me what Cat Six and Ram and Mibs and all of that fun language that now I can pretend like I know what it is. You have taught me so much, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all that you've done for Clinton City Schools. You are truly going to be missed. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I couldn't find a better director to work for than Kelly, and all you know that. And uh, I do appreciate the school board employing me over the last 14 years, and it really has been a pleasure to work here. It really has. Mm -hmm. He has some fun stories about some of the classes that he does for us that maybe we can share offline sometime. We won't take time to share that now, but, but there will be another open position other than technology for some class instruction that we're going to have to find um, a mature person to take over. So, yes. Thank you so much for a job well done. And I know when you came here, our systems were in, in disarray. <laughs> you did a great job, my yep. friend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a few other updates. Um, we're finishing our, I put third week of summer learning camps. It's not our third week, it's our second week. I guess I'm just wishful thinking. It's actually our <laughs> second full week of summer camps. We had uh, 147 students enrolled in kindergarten uh, boost camp through rising seventh grade. Um, most of our participants, participation is in our kindergarten boost camp. We have 40 students, so both of those classes are maxed out with rising kindergartners. And then as expected, our rising fourth grade with the third grade retention law, um, those two are our heaviest attended grade levels. We are only averaging about 88 students per day. That is a decrease in attendance in what we have seen in previous summers. I think a lot of that is due to the fact that the COVID scare is kind of over now, so parents feel like that their, their children have kind of caught up. I think that is playing into it. And then also, we had a large number of parents sign their kid up for summer school, anticipating they may need it for TCAP, and we encouraged them to do that. And then when it came back as proficient, or they took the retake, or they got the appeal, they've chosen not to participate in summer school. So that's kind of where that attendance and membership discrepancy is coming from. One of the most exciting things is, is that we took uh, advantage of a state transportation grant, because knowing that third grade was going to be mandatory, we did not want transportation to keep any kid from attending. And so we have an actual school bus picking up at Clinton Elementary and South Clinton and transporting back and forth uh, to and from summer school with uh, uh, teachers on there to, to help supervise. And that has been the highlight for about eight of our kids. They think it is fabulous <laughs> being able to ride the, the bus to and from school. It's so It's a yellow limousine. It's a yellow limousine because we don't get to do that in Clinton City Schools, so it's a treat. So that has been interesting and fun, and we were happy to provide that for eight of our kids to be able to come. As I told you all before the meeting, um, after TCAP, our retake and the appeals process, approximately 88% of our third graders will be able to be promoted to fourth grade without any sort of intervention. Only four of those students fell in the below basic um, that are having to attend summer school and do the school tutoring. So um, while we didn't really agree with the law, I think that it tapped out to where the kids who need summer school, I think the saving grace, and that's what I told Bill Dunn today, was the, the appeal process allowing us to use the universal screener and anybody who is 40% or above. That hit, we had what, about 20 kids did the appeal, and then interestingly, we had, Jamie, was it 30 kids took the retake? 30, 35 kids took the retake? 
and 10 of those became proficient and then two actually moved from below basic to approaching. So it changed the trajectory of 12 of our kids. And I think across the state they've been very surprised at how many kids have shown up proficient on the retake. Uh, Jamie and I feel like a lot of that is due to stamina. It was a 30 to 40 minute test versus a two to three day, day test where some of your subtests were 90 minutes long. And so we do feel like the stamina with our eight and nine year olds plays a big piece into their performance. And so I'm very tickled that we encouraged our parents to take advantage of the retake that served them well. So um, I said the CES sewage repair project. I guess I should have said wastewater line project, Scott. Thank you. I, I took your nicer version of that. Um, it is underway. Um, as you know, we've got a piece of the terrazzo here, but they anticipate that they're going to wrap up that project hopefully by the second week of July. Um, we're in front of the bathroom and at the bottom of the steps. Um, they have had to, I thought it was going to be a much smaller piece of the terrazzo. It's a fairly it's a fairly significant little rectangle there, and we our first thought was we'll just carpet it, and then when you look at it, the carpet is in front of the boys' bathroom. We do not want to carpet in front of the boys' bathroom for obvious reasons, and so um, we are actually going to concrete it, but then we can paint that concrete, and so we're going to, that's what we'll paint an emblem, Clinton City Schools, Clinton Elementary School, something on that concrete to make it look like it's meant to be there with a border, and so we anticipate doing that. They're going to bring in painters to do that for us, but we'll have to let the concrete sit and cure for um, several months, and so it'll probably be fall break or December before we get the painting done, so it will just be ugly concrete for the first few weeks of school. I think uh, Gail Hunt would be available. Yeah. <laughs> She could do a mural, yes, she could a mural in the concrete. Could you make that happen for us, Joey? She's your friend. If you could make that happen. <laughs> um, we are also in the process of painting and installing sound panels in the Clinton Elementary cafeteria. If you've had the joy of participating in lunch there, it is a very stimulating environment. And it will always be stimulating just because of the number of kids in there. But we feel like if we can do some sound panels, we're looking at putting some on the wall. And also, they make them now in the tiles. And so we had um, our uh, consultant come out on Wednesday and as he's going to work up some pricing and some different uh, things that we could do. But our goal is to have that in hopefully um, by the time kids come back, if not soon after that. Um, the South Clinton flooring project is almost complete. When I checked on that earlier this week, they only had the primary hallway to go. And Scott and I, we weren't happy with the way those light, the light gray looked in the hallways. And so we kind of got creative with a plan and they had already purchased the free replacement. So knowing that our goal is to replace all of the classrooms, we allowed them to replace the cafeteria. We kept the, uh, kept it in the new area because once you get in a classroom, you don't notice the defects quite as much. And then we used all the remainder to do four additional classrooms. And then we purchased a darker floor to go in the hallways. And I'll send you all a picture, but it looks much better. It is beautiful. And so they are about to finish up that project. And even in the cafeteria, you can definitely tell the difference between the new, the replacement that they have um, purchased for us for free. The RFP for the North Clinton Playground has been issued. It should have been in the paper yesterday for the second week. We hope that we'll have the RFP process done by the end of July, and then as soon as that is done, we will rock and roll to get that um, in as soon as we can get the equipment in. We are still moving on the Clinton Elementary Playground in the lower parking lot. Um, we just have to create the additional parking spaces for staff first. Scott is working with the City of Clinton on that, so we're just kind of at a lot of people's mercy for that getting done before we can move on the playground, but that is in, that is in action. Um, I'm sure you have heard that Commissioner Penny Schwinn has stepped down as our Education Commissioner of the State of Tennessee. Um, Bill Lee has named a um, lady out of Texas. Her last name is Reynolds, so she'll be Commissioner Reynolds is going to take over on July 1st. We have had a lot of our um, very consistent veteran Department of Ed people resign and they'll be leaving at the end of June and that's kind of expected because of you know, the commissioner is going to bring in her new cabinet. And so we did lose a lot of our um, very um, 
dedicated people to our district that really served us well. They have chosen to leave at the end of June. So I do, there's gonna be lots of turnover, lots of changes, so we're eager to see what happens with this change in leadership. And then just for the general public to know, central office is remaining open all summer from eight o'clock to 3.30 each day. So city residents can come by at any time if they've not registered their children to attend. Um, and then the staff, oh my goodness, this is gonna make so so hard to say, but the staff will return on July 27th, which is crazy. Sneak peek will be held on August the 2nd, which is a Wednesday from 3.30 to 5.30. The first half day school on the third, first full day of school is on the 4th and then guys will be back up and running for a new school year. So that concludes my report. Any questions for me? I had heard recently that um, Crossroads Christ Fellowship, they had a school there and they recently sold that church and the school closed. Have they you seen any students? We that? saw they closed their private school a few years mm -hmm. ago. South Clinton saw an influx mm -hmm. of the their school. What they closed was a daycare. It was a daycare. Okay. So it was the daycare that closed. And it is my understanding Anderson County Schools has bought that property and that will become a new Claxton school down the down the road. Okay. So okay. yes, but um, no, we didn't get any of the, the daycares, but when the private school closed, yes. We did. Okay. And really those are great kids. They have been a great addition yeah, to South Clinton. Great, great yeah, great kids. It's great families. <clears throat> we'll get them in the pre-K then. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions or comments? I wanted to share something that I found out today that has some a little interest for us. Um, I think last month I talked about Augusta Ridley's cl class coming, making a presentation to Historic Downtown. Did I? Did we do that last mm -hmm. month? Uh -huh. um, they came and, and worked in conjunction with the high school kids that were that were heading up this tree planting project. And the high school kids won their contest. Mm -hmm. um, so in the in the social media promotion of all of this, one of our Clinton grads and I think a friend of yours, Brian Copeland, yes, yes, is a realtor in Nashville. Yes, messaged me and said, "You guys should apply for a National Association of Realtors placemaking grant for this project." We said, "Okay." So we quickly met with the local association from Knoxville because they had to be the ones to apply for the grant for us. Um, we got it in like right at the deadline and somehow, somehow we found out today that we won. Yeah. So wow. it's $7,500 wow. and, and most of that can go towards the South Clinton kids art project that they had designed. They had designed That's a sculpture awesome. to go there in the park by the library. So now we actually have that much money uh, yeah, to act, make that, that come. Sculpture can come to that sculpture can become a reality thanks to that grant and the kids. Those That's kids cool. will be able to see that that idea actually Aww. put into action. So we just right. found Does we Ms. found Ridley that out. Does Miss Ridley know today. this yet? We we just found out. I don't I don't know if she knows yet because we just found out and I wanted to, so awesome. I wanted to do it here. And that is so exciting. That mm -hmm. is awesome. So that little project between Clinton High School kids and Clinton City kids, those kids have netted $12,500 wow. for the city for that little project. Wow. That is Pretty amazing. Cool. That is amazing. That is great news. I can't wait for Miss Ridley to find out. And the kids. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, God, you can't get any better than that. What kind of sculpture is it going to be, Joey? Well, the kids designed um, a turtle because that little area in 100 years ago was called Terrapin Hill because <laughs> some little story about turtles that got stranded there when the river would back up into, the, into Town Springs uh -huh. that we all know and love so much. Um, so they designed a turtle laying on its back reading a book oh, wow. to go How there in cute. front of the library. And they researched different materials, what types of materials would be best to make a sculpture out of. Augusta did an extensive lesson mm -hmm. with them on this. So they not only designed the actual sculpture, made a model for us, researched the materials and decided which metals they, they thought it should be made out of. So it was a really good STEM lesson yeah, yes. for them. Mm -hmm. So she was our sixth grade teacher at South mm -hmm. that was willing to let us combine classes because she didn't want the children to have to get used to somebody else in the middle of the year. And we asked her in the spring what her dream job was, and she said, my dream job would be to be an art teacher. 
And so she is going to move into oh. North and South and be the art teacher awesome. for North and South. And I'm super excited that she's going to take some of these concepts that she's done with our South Clinton kids and then move it to also to North Clinton she's and let our North Clinton kids experience some of that. So. It was super impressive to see all of them, mm -hmm. yeah, all awesome. these kids be involved in mm -hmm. this. But the fact that we were, have been able to act on it so quickly has been a surprise. Um, just these grants and things have come through for us. And wow. It's, you can't say no to kids. I, you shouldn't really, be able to say I, no to kids. I, I, I don't know what our angle was, but it had to have been kids yeah. that got it for us. That's amazing. And thanks to Brian for sending it. Yeah. It was his. Our way. He caught him I mean, and he said, this is the exact kind of project that these are made for. So I think you guys should oh, do great. it. That's wow. great. Wow. Perfect. Yep. That's amazing. Great. Thank you, Brian. If you're, I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Any further news, questions, or comments? Hearing none, I'll declare the meeting adjourned. Yay. That is awesome.